whatever the world throws at you, take it on. This is my Be unstoppable. The all-new 2015 Ford Edge. And good afternoon, everyone, from the lobby of Bruner Motors on the corner of the South Loop and Lillian Street in Stephenville. Make sure you swing by. We'll be here for another 30 minutes. We've got lunch, courtesy of the pizza place, refreshments, and, of course, we'll spin the prize wheel later in the half hour for Turleton Athletic and Bruner Auto giveaways. We'll also hear uh, later in the show from one of the heroes of Wednesday night's win over Midwestern State. That's Deshaun Riddick. As always, the Coach Lon Reisman Radio Show, sponsored by the Bernardo family. So we thank them for their support and making the show possible. Coach, you talk about going from one end of the emotional spectrum to the other, from Saturday night to Wednesday night. Okay, so this, with this, I guess that this profession that I've decided to get into has done for the last, uh, what, 35 or 37 years, whatever it's been now. So it's, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the coaching ranks, there's, no, there's nothing in between. You're either here or you're here because there's no ties. <laughs> so there's no middle ground in it. And so, uh, you know, it's uh, what it's all about is you got to be able to handle the adversity of, of, of losing some games and try to find the positives out of it and, and uh, the excitement and the emotions of winning games like that. Yeah, and let's talk about some adversity that you faced, and that was on Saturday night. You yep. filled a Texas A&M Commerce coach up. 67 to 65, and I guess hindsight's always 20 20, but uh, missed, three, missed free throws are a big factor at the end of the well, game. That and getting off to a poor start. I yes. Mean, you don't, you know, you can't dig yourself in a hole, and we did in the first half, uh, and uh, we didn't uh, play up to, up to our abilities, and we know that. And, and then the second half, we really uh, get focused in and, and actually take the lead with about a minute 13 to go, and we're a, we're a rebound and, and, and securing a rebound and bringing it down the floor or away from having an opportunity to win the game. And, uh, you know, you said the free throws, the yeah. 14 for 21, you're, you're going to have a hard time. You know, you've got to make some free, you know, you have, to, you have to continue to work on that and get that, get that. But we didn't actually shoot the ball well. You know, we did the second half, but we didn't shoot the ball well for the game. You know, we're, we're averaging about 47% on the year. We're 40% the game. And at home. Yeah. And uh, all those combined to that, uh, that two-point loss. And yes. We're going to talk here in a minute about the Midwestern game, but the end of those games, kind of similar with the ball in your hands. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's that close in this conference right now. There's it's just so much. Uh, it's just so, we're so close. You know, I mean, there's no doubt. You know, you look down there and against the Commerce, we have 17 turnovers. And you cannot turn the ball over 17 times in a game, and, in a close game. And then, uh, when that, we have seven turnovers, and that's the difference, and that's the difference in that type of ball game. And so, uh, you know, we're 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 getting a little better right now, Casey. I'm starting to see us, and we're building on it now. Where that takes us, I don't know. In the next couple of weeks, I've, we've been looking for that opportunity to see a little bit of building into that peak time where you want to be good by the end of February, going into the playoffs. And, um, there's no doubt that Wednesday night could be one of those games that help you have spark that a little bit. We've looked at some things in practice and we feel good about some of the adjustments we're making in practice right now. We're seeing the big thing in practice is can I see some improvement in practice at this time of the year. You know, some great teams just stay complacent. They just stay where they're at and, there's, and they still win, but they don't improve. And, and I think that the, the real secret at this time of the year is, is, is there a chance that you can improve your sure. team and can you make the right can you push the right buttons to make your team improve? And, and this week, for the first time, I don't know if it'll continue to translate, but we're, we're starting to see some improvement in, in, in certain people and in certain certain chemistry areas of, of, of the team. And that makes me feel like we're, we're looking at the right buttons to push right now. So you fall to Commerce 67 to 65. Coach, after the game, you told me that things were going to get worse Good. before they got better. And it turns out they got a little bit better before they got well, worse. You know, we, again, we went to practice and made some decisions and, and started looking at something, some things that we felt like we needed to look at. And, you know, and, and again, uh, we, we had a full, you know, our first slate, everybody was out there. Malcolm didn't get to play Saturday night, and you're taking 10 points and, and seven, six, seven rebounds off the floor. And you're taking a great athlete and, uh, off the floor, and, and he's played, you know, he's had big games for us this year. And so, but that wasn't, you know, I, that, again, that's not the reason that we lost. We lost because we did, we did not take care of the ball, 17 turnovers, and you're not going to go 14 for 21 from the free throw line at home in a two-point game. And get, you're going to get yourself in trouble. So, you know, I was proud of the kids. They did fight back. I'm very proud of them. They could have just, you know, when they're down 12, they could have said, this is, this is wait for another night. No, they fought back, actually took the lead. 
and that showed a lot of character that they that they they continued to fight. When we've been down this year, they have fought themselves back in the games. You know, we were looking the other day. You know, we are 16 wins and five losses right now, and four of those losses are by three, one, two, and three. That's how close we are. To, you know, where we could really, you know, something could, you know, can be really special. But you know, we've lost a few close games. Now, can we turn that around as we go down the, the last six games of the season? We're into our second half of the conference race. We've got a conference tournament coming up, and the only way you're going to do that is do we see see the progress of being able to improve our team. And like I said, you know, I was really wor worried about how we would come out Monday and Tuesday, but we came out and we, we focused ourselves. I, I felt like we did, and we came back and went to did some really good things on on, on Monday and Tuesday and, 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 and took that took that and, and took it to the game on Wednesday night and won a tough game because Midwestern is a very good basketball team. Yeah, the Mustangs, the number 11 ranked team in the nation. Tarleton State was unranked this week. You defeat the Mustangs 66 to 65. Let's let's keep talking about turnovers because when this team coach commits under 15 turnovers on the year, you're 10 and 0, and you committed seven against Midwestern State. Well, you know, last year we only averaged 12, and that was that's big. You know, it, it's what we're looking for. You know, this year we've actually we've been we probably have a higher average than we've had in a while. And, that was one of our keys the other night is you've got to handle the ball and we made some adjustments in our offense the other night to make sure that we took away some of the areas that Midwestern wanted to expose us in and, and I think that, that helped us a lot too and uh, we made some adjustments on ball handling and we made some adjustments on personnel that we wanted in there at a certain time of the game and I think all those things contributed Casey to the seven you know not having more than seven turnovers and coach uh, Midwestern State came into this game leading the conference in three-point shooting. You were dead last, and you hit eight threes, forty-seven percent from behind the arc. Well, I, you know, we've had a couple. Of, you know, one thing that we've had this year that we've struggled with is is, is our shooting percentage from three. I mean, we've been last year where I think we were almost at first forty percent from what we're number one in the conference. Yes, you are. And then all of a sudden we've we've reverted back. That whole thing went this reverted back that we're we're not as good as shooting basketball. And I think that's and I think that's hurt us in some of the very close games. Why we've lost three, you know, four games by three and two and one and three or something like that, because we have not shot the ball from the perimeter as well as we've had in the last five six years. And uh, when we do shoot the ball well from the perimeter, like we did the other night, when we were I think you said we were, we were like seven. Forty-seven percent. Forty-seven percent. I mean, I mean, that's that's way higher than we've been. Yeah. And, and then you look at seven turnovers. If we continue to build on those two areas, then we're going to have a chance to win some games. Was Roman Jenkins? Was that the best game that he played all year long? I don't think all around. I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, you've got to remember that we have played what was it nine games this year? Now the second half of the year, we've been nine games, something like that. I, I don't know what we've had nine conference games we, or eight conference games, and then we had one before that and a couple of games, ten games he's played in. But what the problem is, you may have to remember, Roe had not played in a year and a half. He had not played in a year and a half, and so it's taking him time to get back into, you know, some type of flow of how you know how he wants to. He's trying to match what we want him to do. He's trying to shake the rust off. He's trying to, uh, you know, play within the system and, and making sure that you know he's understanding what we want. And so yeah, I thought he played the best game he's played all year. I thought I, we saw some things in him that we haven't seen. The big thing is is that he had ten rebounds and yeah. and he competed on the boards of Midwestern. And then he gets eight points and two you blocks. Know, and we know he's struggling at the free throw line right now. And, and we're working with that. And that's going to just take time for him to build his confidence up. You know. He's two for seven the other day. Coach Chris told me the other day he watched him shoot three throws and went 20 for 25 in, in practice. So we know, the, we know the capabilities are there. He's just trying to get himself back in a game concentration type of, uh, you know, what he wants, you know, trying to absorb what we're trying to do. And uh, I think that he's going to get better as, as the year goes on. We need him to continue to play like he did on Wednesday night. If he plays like he did on Wednesday night, he do, you know, he does a great job. He steps out on screens. He's a good athlete. You know, he, uh, you know, he, he, he plays hard, and so uh, I'm happy that I'm just hoping that I can see see him continue to improve because there's another one of those things you and I just talked about. If you're going to peak at the right time, you've got to see some improvement, not only in, in, in your players but in your chemistry. Uh, Deshaun Riddick, we're going to talk to him shortly. He hit three big free throws with 20 seconds left to give you a one-point lead. Just how wild was the end of that game after Riddick made those three free throws? Well, I mean, a little stressful, didn't it? Well, <laughs> Casey, okay, this this job is stressful. Period. Let me tell you. I mean, I mean, we're all we're, we're all in stress. Uh, but you know, hardest place we say really how profession. But yeah, you know, I, I mean, you know, I think it's been good. It's, it's, it's Deshaun is really uh, 
He is really mature. He is, you know, I like what I like about Deshaun at times is that he doesn't get too high, he doesn't get too low. He's, he's very even keel. He's very under control. Now he might be, his emotions inside might be tearing him out, but he doesn't. But he doesn't have that expression. If you watch his expression, he's very much under control on himself. When he hit that three in the game, he he wanted that shot. When he went up the free throw line, his expression never changed. He hit all three free throws. He, he, he you know he keeps he keeps. And when you're a point guard and you and your team sees sees that when he's out there running the point, you know they see they, they kind of feed off his 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 calmness and uh, yeah. and he he really uh, he does a great job. I don't you know. I mean I'm really I've been impressed with him. I've watched him. You know he's been a, we raised him since he was a freshman last year. I told him the other day that he's not a sophomore anymore. He must get ready to be a junior because that's what he's getting ready to go into next year. But he uh, I have a lot of confidence in him right now. He's playing with a lot of confidence right now. I, uh, you know, I'm proud of uh, the type of player he's becoming for us. Uh, he's an outstanding young man on the floor and off the floor, and uh, he brings a lot to our team right now. He brings a lot to our team that, that you know, that 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 helps our chemistry and, 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 and what we're trying to accomplish here in the last five or six games. So with that, let's bring Sean Riddick onto the show. We'll take our first break, and when we return, time to hear from Mr. Riddick. This is the Coach Long Reisman Radio Show on the Turtleton Sports Network. Time for this week's Tarleton's Player Spotlight. Today's guest in his second year at Tarleton. He's appeared in 56 games, 93 assists, just 45 turnovers. He's knocked down 42 threes in 104 attempts. He's a graduate of Austin Connolly High School, making his first ever appearance at the Coach Lon Reisman Radio Show. Please put your hands together. Welcome to the show, number 12. It's John Ritchie. Ritchie, you. Always good to have you on the show and good to talk to you after the game on Wednesday night. And obviously, it's kind of emotional when you do a post-game interview right after a game like that. Have you had time to kind of reflect on that game and what it meant to this team? Um, yeah, I've had, a, I've had a quite some time to think about it. So I've talked with some of the guys like Mike and yeah. Charles and EJ. You know, we feel real good about it. And we said that it was a win that we needed. And we feel like it was the win that you know, we needed to get started. Kind of feels good to beat Joe Westbrook too, doesn't it? <laughs> You're throwing with me. Uh, with 38 seconds left of the game, you trailed by two. EJ Reed would pass you the ball uh, to take a shot to win the game. Instead of explaining to you what happened, let's listen back to the call from Wednesday night. 13 on the shot clock, 24 seconds left of the game. Tarleton trailing by two. Left wing, Riddick takes a three-pointer. No good, but he was fouled. They'll call a foul and send this John Riddick to the line for three Bruno free throws. They'll say that Gretzen McNeil fouled Deshaun Riddick behind the arc, so with 18.5 seconds left in this one, Tarleton trailing 63-61. to They'll have an opportunity to take the lead with 3 free. Okay, tell our fans now what you told me after the game, what was going through your head right at that moment. Um, at that moment, you know, I was thinking about last year at the regional championship game, when I missed the last two free throws and I feel like it made it that much harder for us to win that game. So I was going up there trying not to repeat that and focus and try to knock them down. I know everybody was counting on me. How tense was the atmosphere as Deshaun stepped up to the line? Well, let's listen to that. I think these are the biggest free throws of Deshaun Riddick's life. Probably. I think so. First free throw on its way for Riddick and it's good. Tarleton trails by one with 18.5 seconds left. The scary thing about this is if they get all three free throws, Midwestern will shoot to win. Second free throw on its way for Riddick, and it's good as well. And we are tied at 63. Ten points for Deshaun. Ice in the veins of the sophomore out of Austin Connolly High School. Everyone on their feet at Wisdom Gym. Tarleton has one timeout remaining. Haggerty will take a timeout as soon as this free throw goes. The third free throw, good, and Tarleton State takes a 64 to 63 lead with 18.5 seconds remaining. So how good does it feel, and how much uh, pressure is off your shoulders when that third one goes down? Uh, a lot of pressure, you know. I felt, I felt really good about it, though. Just, I mean, I felt like it was just a game of practice, so it was... <laughs> yeah, but I, you know, I see y'all practicing free throws in practice. Can you really replicate, though, that situation in practice? You can. It's not the same. I feel like at the end of the day, it's just all about confidence. And you had the confidence to knock down those three and give your team the lead. Did you ever think when you came to Tarleton a year and a half ago you'd be in those kind of moments just as a sophomore? 
Honestly, honestly, I didn't think so. But you know, as me being the competitive person I am, I was kind of hoping that I would be. Run us through that last play, Deshaun, after uh, Fuller got the dunk to go and Hart took it up the court. Um, you know, it's kind of it's like a drill we do every day in practice. Yeah. You know, full court layups, and so it's like you get the ball down court as fast as you can. And, Whatever's open, you know, you kind of take a shot and, and nobody stopped him, so he kept, he kept going. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen Tarleton win a regional championship game about 10 years ago on that same play, and uh, and how good was it for Harts to get that after what happened against Commerce on Saturday? Um, it was it was real good, you know, because I know somebody like Mike, he, he's real emotional, he's real competitive, so after turning the ball over, I know he felt like he let us down the other game, but I know he wanted to take that last shot, and I don't think I would rather have anybody say anybody but him. Visiting with Deshaun Reddick here at the Coach Lon Reisman Radio Show. Deshaun, you're from Austin Connolly, knows us from Pflugerville, Mike Carr, just from Georgetown. Did you ever play Mike in high school? I played him, like, I think it was my sophomore year. Is he pretty good in high school? Yeah, he was just the same. Same thing. Fast. Did he talk as much? Was he his chat? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing about Deshaun, you know, here you are, you're kind of learning from this guy. Obviously, he's the upperclassman. But y'all's personalities are totally different, aren't they? Yeah. He's kind of chatty. Yeah. 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 yeah I just, I remember last year when we were going to the tournament, and it was like the first game. We had like a walk at like at 8 o'clock in the morning. Everybody's like tired and just waking up, and Mike comes downstairs off the elevator just yelling and screaming. <laughs> and like everybody's looking at him like, did he go to sleep last night? <laughs> he might not have. I don't know. No one him, he might not. Uh, Deshaun, Coach Reisman always talks about one thing he really likes about you is you never get too up, you never get too down. You're kind of mellow, always focused. Where do you get that from? Um, just, I mean, like when I was younger, I used to always play. My parents always told me to just like, be humble and keep a even kill. So I guess I, kept, I kind of always kept that with me. Deshaun, running short on time, uh, time for our final question. How, how do you see this team growing and improving over the final month of the regular season? Um, I see this, if we come in to practice every week focused like we did last week or this week, um, I feel like we can improve to where we want to be and how we need to be to get to all the to get to the goals that we want to accomplish as a team. Riddick, as always, thanks for your time. Congrats on a good performance Wednesday night. Thank you. That's number 12, Deshaun Riddick. We return to one minute. Coach Tom will preview the matchup with Cameron when the Coach Long Reason Radio Show continues right after this. Tarleton fans, don't forget tickets are on sale now for the Lone Star Conference Basketball Tournament in Allen, March 2nd through the 5th. You've got three options to buy tickets in advance. Adult all session passes are discounted to $45. You can also buy student and single session vouchers that can be redeemed in any session. Tickets are on sale now through February 28th at the Wisdom Gym Ticket Office or over the phone if you're not in the area with a credit card by calling 254-968-1832. Let's take you around the Lone Star Conference. We'll start by looking at the NABC Top 25 poll for this week. Two teams from the conference ranked and coached for the first time since November 12th, 2013. You're not in this poll. Uh, does it allow you to kind of sit back now and reflect on 41 straight weeks? Well, I don't. I really don't reflect on any of that, Casey. What I reflect on right now is the present, what we're in on the present time. We're ready for the, re you know, the regional rankings are the ones that count for us. They're the ones that get you where you have to go. And, and so, you know, that's nice. It's always been nice to be there, and we've been there a lot. And, uh, you know, we we're thankful for that. But right now, we're just concentrating on where we're at and where we have to go. Midwestern State was 11th in the nation this week. Angelo State was 12th. They both lost on Wednesday night as we take a look at those games from Wednesday, February 3rd. Of course, Tarleton over Midwestern State, 66-65. Coach uh, Cameron was on a four-game winning streak, and Texas A&M Commerce uh, won 94 to 77, maybe a little boost of momentum for Commerce after the win here. Well, they Commerce, you know, they would they went two and zero to start the season, then they won by lost four in a row, and now they won two in a row. So I mean, we know they have to. They're so the the, the parity is so so equal, and the, uh, you know that it's going to be a, 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 a we're beating up on each other. What Haggerty and I talked about after the game the other night, we're just we're just beating up on each other right now. We got four teams that are you know that all have three losses in the conference at the top of the conference, and so. You know, somebody's going to separate themselves sooner or later. I mean, you're going to have to. You know, we're done with Midwestern. We went one and one with them. 
Uh, you know, we, uh, we're going to go to Cameron. We've, we, we've defended our home floor at Cameron, but we have to go on the road and, and, and take, take advantage of an opportunity. And we have to take advantage of the opportunity on Saturday afternoon when we play Cameron. And uh, it's a big, you know, it's a big game. And it's one that, you know, if you want to compete, for the, compete down the stretch, it's one that can propel you to where you want to be. Uh, West Texas defeated Angelo State 92 to 77. Is anybody big playing better than them right now? They're playing pretty well, but they've played, they played a lot of games at home right now too themselves. And so they're like us. They're getting ready to go on the road. I think they go on the road for four and four and four out of five here lately. And so uh, you have to play well at home. And, uh, they're playing well at home right now, and uh, and you've got to go find some games on the road. Eastern New Mexico over Kingsville 74 71. Coach said it. Four teams with three losses in the conference. West Texas A&M at six and three, tied with Cameron, who is six and three. Tarleton and Midwestern State, a half game back, tied at five and three. You've got two teams at four and four in Angelo State and Texas A&M Commerce, and Eastern New Mexico at two and six. Kingsville at one and seven. That's a look at the Lone Star Conference. Time to do a quick preview of Saturday's game. Four o'clock tip off from Aggie Jim in Lawton, Oklahoma. Coach, in the first meeting between these two teams, you. Won that game by 10, but that was a long time ago. Yeah, it was a long time. It was January 2nd, I believe. <clears throat> so it's been a while, and uh, we know how well they're playing right now. They've done a great job. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be a tough ball game. It's on their home floor, but we have, you know, we're going to go up there. We're playing, you know, we played well coming out of Wednesday night. Hopefully some of these things that we're doing, these adjustments that we're making, we're going to, you know, make a, have an opportunity. All you want to do on the road case is have an opportunity late in the game to win. Uh, you know, we, we've lost up there. We've been successful up there before. So, uh, you know, we, we'll, we'll take our game plan up there, and uh, I, I think we're going to play well. And, and we're gonna just, you know, we're going to have to shoot. You have to shoot the ball well on the road. There's no doubt about it. And we're going to have to have a great defensive game plan. We're going to have to execute it. Uh, they're a very balanced scoring coach. They're the only team in the conference that has in the top ten in scoring. Well, you know, they're just scoring a lot of points. I, I can't remember. I mean, they're, they're averaging almost 80 points a game, I think. And so, uh, and they have three players that play heavy minutes. All three of their guards are playing during conference time, playing over 30 minutes per person. And so they're, 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 they're very physical, they're, they're, they're very quick, they execute well, and uh, you know, they have one of the premier post players in the league. And, and, uh, and, and so you know, we're going to have to and, and, and play very, very tough. When, you know, Brantley's playing well for them, then they come off, and they have people that come off the bench, and they, can, and they understand their, their roles, and they, and they play well within their roles. They got a freshman point guard, J.B. Longcoats, that's in the top four in the conference in assists and steals, and he's averaging 11 points per game. Yeah, I think he was a redshirt last year. So I mean, he's had, and I'll tell you what, that's you know, that's that's what's helped him. You know, he redshirted last year, or he didn't play last year. And he's actually his third year in the program. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, he's a, uh, you know, he's 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 gained a lot of confidence, and he's played very well. I was very impressed with him when I watched film on him. And, and, and how hard he does play, and, and uh, he's a very good ball handler, and he, he's very unselfish, and uh, he you know he he does a great job of running their running their offense. They've had an under 500 record twice over the last five years, but they're still 40 and 15 in Aggie gym. Well, uh, and it's a, it's probably the smallest gym in the league, if you remember, and uh, it's a very tough place to play. We've been, you know we won I think we won up there last year, and maybe the year before. About two, uh, I believe. Yeah, you know it's always been a close game up there, and that's what you you know you're going to have that on the road, and we have an opportunity to win. We had you know. We have to play well up there, and, and so they really play well at home. It's the Aggies and the Texans tomorrow at 4 o'clock from Lawton, Oklahoma. We'll take a one-minute break. Coming up next, we will spin the prize wheel and wrap up this edition of the Coach Long Reesman Radio Show when Tarleton Texan basketball continues right after this. Time to spin the prize wheel here at Bruner Motors. We've got the wheel uh, where you can win a travel package to the Lone Star Conference Tournament in Allen, an oil, ch an oil change car wash courtesy of Bruner Motors. We've got Tarleton polo shirts, hats, t-shirts, autographed team pictures, a lot to give away. So what do you say, Coach? Let's spin it. Peyton Pollard. First up, Peyton, come on down. Member of the Plowboys who, who uh, made life not fun for Midwestern State the other night. What a crowd that was. Great crowd. Great crowd. So Peyton, come up, spin that wheel. We've got one person so far in the grand prize spinoff. That's Hayden Frederick, who's also a member of the Plowboys. So here we go. Peyton's going to spin the wheel, and he will get a Final Four t-shirt. Congratulations, right. Peyton. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, Travis Livingston. Travis, where are you at? Come on up, Travis. Here comes Travis. Uh, we only have one person in the grand prize, so that spinoff's going to be on February 26th, our final show, show before the Lone Star Conference. Starting with this, Travis prepares to spin the wheel. Oh, man, Travis. 
Uh, uh, Forrest Smith's on there. I just got through eating. <laughs> <laughs> I just got through eating that. that uh, oh, and he gets a cat. Congratulations, uh, Travis. Thank you very much. Uh, Dalton Reese Lopez. Dalton, come on. So this is Dalton's first time to spin, I don't think. Dalton, come on up. So two members of the Plowboys. I see we got foul play here today. Appreciate their Great band. Great band. There we go, Dalton. We also have Baylor tickets up there, too, for the game on February 16th, and he's going to get a t-shirt. So All right. congratulations to Dalton, Travis, and Peyton. Remember, come out next week. You can spend the prize wheel as well. The Thurlton Texans 11 and 9 overall. They're 5 and 5 in the conference. They defeated Midwestern by 14 Wednesday night. Coach Wilson's squad will return to action tomorrow at 2 p.m. from Abbey Aggie Gym in Lawton, Oklahoma. You can catch the action, the National Farm Life pregame show with Kelton Weeds at 1.45 tomorrow. I want to remind you folks there's a Texan Club luncheon at Agave at City Hall at City Limits in Agave this Tuesday at noon. You can still RSVP for that Texan Club luncheon. It will feature Brian Conger and Julie Mata as the keynote speakers. You need to RSVP by close of business today by calling Kathy Doyle at 254-968-9178. We hope to see you at the Texan Club luncheon this Tuesday at noon. Uh, call 968-9178 to RSVP today. The Texans take on the Aggies at 4 o'clock on Saturday in Lawton. That National Farm Line pregame show at 3.45 p.m. You'll hear from Associate Head Coach Chris Reisman and more. Lance Briggs, tennis team coach. They're going to play tennis tomorrow at 10 a.m. Hopefully it warms up. You can always tell it's tennis season or whatever because it's 30 degrees outside. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I told him, I said, you, 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 I said, Coach, it's going to be a little chilly tomorrow. You might want to bundle up. Yeah. But if you're in the area, you're in Stephenville, get out and support the tennis team tomorrow at 10 a.m. from the Tarleton Tennis Complex. They sure would appreciate that. We've got baseball and softball going on right now. Uh, the Texans won 6-2. to two. That game is just final. They defeat Love and Christian. They're off to a 4-1 start. Great start. Great start from the girls. They're 10th in the nation in the preseason poll. And they're going to take on uh, St. Edwards at 12.30 today. So they win the first game today. They're now 4-1. Tarleton baseball, last time Ryan and I checked, tied at 6 in the 7th inning. It's in the 8th inning now. And that's from the Houston Astros ballpark. Minute Maid Park in downtown Houston. Three games in a major league park. It's great. It's great. They've been there for the last two or three years, and it's, it's great competition for them. And uh, we're we're looking really forward to our men, men baseball and softball having great years. And it's not Yankee Stadium. That's a good thing. You know? Well, it's uh, you know it, it, that's a little different. The Yankees probably would love to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you know Coach well, you know why. So uh, they're going to play St. Cloud State Saturday at six, and then Sunday at two o'clock against Henderson State from Houston. So if you're in the area, Coach Conger would love to see you out for that. Remember the Coach Long Reisman Show every Friday at noon from Bruner Motors. The Coach Misty Wilson Radio Show every Thursday at noon from the lobby of First Financial Bank in Stephenville. Each show has free lunch, refreshments, and more. Tarleton fans, download the new mobile sports app. And search Tarleton Sports in the iTunes or Google Play Store for Android. And remember to text the word Texans to 95577 to stay up to date on our upcoming Tarleton Athletic events. Thanks to the Pizza Place for providing the lunch. Thanks to Deshaun Riddick, our special guest. Big thanks to Aaron Young back at the KTRL 90.5 FM studio. Of course, our on-site engineer, the one and the only Jody Lee Cobble to my left, and of course to the Bruner Auto family for sponsoring the show all season long. Last but not least, thanks to our audience and thanks to each and every one of you for listening. Coach, time for our final question. You're a former junior college head coach and assistant coach in the state of Oklahoma. How much do you just enjoy that atmosphere and playing in a place like Cameron with the tradition? Well, you know, it's, it's any time you go over the Red River, that's why I got that's why I came south of the Red River. That's, you know, <laughs> but uh, no, I've been in Oklahoma, coach in Oklahoma, have a lot of friends up there, and it's always been a you know a great rivalry to go over the go over there and have you know the Texas Oklahoma rivalry. And uh, Cameron's a very hard place to play. We know that it's, it's, uh, they have a lot of tradition there, and I have played there since the 19 early 80s in the gym. So it'll be a, it'll be a tremendous contest. And they have some fans that have extremely high basketball IQs. Yeah. And, and one of them told me one time, yeah, I remember Coach Reese Mendham when he was 20-something years old, an assistant at Southeastern used to come here. Right. Same fan had been there for 30 years. Yeah, I've seen you come in there a lot. I just keep telling me how old I'm getting, basically. I really appreciate that, all those people. Coach, thanks for your time. Best of luck against Kim. Thank you very much. That's going to do it for the sixth edition of the Coach Long Reisman Radio Show for the 28th year head coach of Texas. In case you are interested, so much for the work motors in Stephenville. Until next time, enjoy your Friday, everyone. And Kelton Weens will talk to you at 1.45 tomorrow from Lawton, Oklahoma.